So, hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Um, ignore the dishes and the sink. I hate doing dishes, but yeah. <laughs> so, I am here today to do something that I've been meaning to do for like months, which is a Q&A baking video. I was meaning to do this video first when I hit 1K, on Twitch, which was like December last year, but life got in the way and honestly I'd be just very lazy. But now I officially actually hit 100 subs in YouTube as well and decided that okay, now now's the time. Now, now we gotta do this. So I'm here a little bit late, but that's okay. And we are gonna be baking um, white chocolate mud cake as I answer to some questions. I'm gonna start by turning on my oven because I always forget to do this. Why don't more recipes put that as the first step you have to do? Like why isn't step one of any recipe turn on your oven to this and this degree? Why is it at the last step where it says like put your baking into the oven at this and this degree. Anyway, uh, we are gonna be needing 175 Celsius. So there we go, oven is on and it is getting hot. Next thing we need to do is figure out where I'm gonna put this mud cake in. It says that I need one of those like pans that has like a detachable like underside. I don't have one of those, so we're gonna improvise. I have a silicone pan. I think that should be okay. So we're gonna do that. And let me start chopping the chocolate before I answer the first question. Um, I also have a knife, but I'm not gonna show it so that YouTube doesn't ban me. So the first question that I got, I asked questions on my Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube community page. And the first question that I got was, since you're doing a baking video, oh my god, my chocolate is melting. Since you're doing a baking video, what is your favorite baked good and then your favorite thing to bake? And I honestly don't know what is my favorite baked good because I'm not a fan of sweet stuff. Like, even this mud cake, I'm bringing it over to a friend's place because I would never eat it on my own. I don't really love super sweet stuff. I guess maybe something more salty. Like, I like doing salty pies. And I, or like, I like eating salty pies and I like eating bread. So, let's say that any salty baked goods are my favorite thing to eat. And, like, those are the... Th things I eat gladly by myself. And then what is my favorite thing to bake is... Honestly, is it wrong to answer bread for both of those? Like, I love baking bread. That is what originally made me, like, start baking more, is that during quarantine, uh, I was like every other bitch and <laughs> baking bread because I was just stuck inside. So... Yeah, I think bread. And I would love to try baking like more different types of bread as well. Because so far I've been like baking the basic things like bread rolls and stuff like that. But I would love to bake like a proper loaf of bread or maybe at some point like bokaja. Just bread. <laughs> I, I, I love bread. I love eating bread. I love baking bread. I think I'm gonna need a bowl for this. So yeah, I guess the long story short is that I am a salty treats type of gal. I'm just very bad with sweets. Like I can't stomach a lot of sweets at once. Also, I try to organize the questions into some kind of gap categories. Question mark, question mark. So these are just like the 
general questions I got. I basically the two categories are general questions and questions related to streaming. And the second question I got was, what is your biggest pet peeve? Which is actually a really good question. Um, like, such a basic answer, but I feel like being inconsiderate is a really big one. Like, just, you know, not respecting other people's time or money and anything like that. Like, just disrespecting others which I feel like should be a basic thing but I'm as the older as I get the more I realize that that is literally not the case I also hate when people cancel plans on me because I don't know it just it has been happening so much it has started to actually get become an issue and also like I feel like it just goes into the same category of being inconsiderate, you know, like I take time out of my day, like I cancel other plans or like cancel streams for you or like don't take shifts on a certain day because we were planning to do something. And then if you cancel on me, that's just like, that's so rude, you know? So I feel like, yeah, that is definitely a big, big, big pet peeve that I have. I don't know if these can be, like, called pet peeves. I don't know if pet peeve is supposed to be, like, something small. So I'm trying to think what would be, like, a small pet peeve. I don't know. Like, I'm sure that I have some things that just, like, irrationally annoy me. But right now I can't think of any. Honestly, I feel like I'm not that easily annoyed. <laughs> Like, you have, you genuinely have to be kind of a shitty person to annoy me. Oh, I got, okay, I have one. Talking over people. Like, once again, really basic thing. But if you talk over me, I will immediately dislike you. Like, that's just, ugh. Okay, yeah, that I feel like that is a really big pet peeve of mine because even thinking about it makes me so mad. All of the chocolate has been chopped. So now I need to put butter and cream into a pan and heat it up. Uh, so let me get both of those things and also a pan. Okay, I feel like we need a camera angle change. Okay, my camera is crooked for some reason, but I can't figure it out. So, we need all of this cream. Ugh. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. Some butter right here. So, let me get 50 grams of that. Perfect. There we go into the pan it goes so yeah let's get to a next question which is tell us your best joke um uh, i don't know i'm really bad at jokes i don't find them funny most of the time and uh, with english jokes i feel like most english jokes are like puns which as someone whose first language is not English, I often don't get. No jokes for me. I'm sorry. Instead, you get a tangent about how I don't understand jokes. So, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Then we have two cat-themed questions. First one is give us ass lore. <laughs> ass. First one is give us ash lore please uh, uh gladly so if you guys don't know ash is my kitty cat he is currently three years old and he is a little menace and i have talked a little bit about how i got him and stuff basically in, i think 2020 2020 fall i had been living on my own for like a year uh, and I felt like I was finally in a stable enough place where I could get a pet. 
I've always wanted my own cat. My dad had cats when I was growing up and I've just, I don't know, I've always been a cat person. So for a long time I have wanted a cat basically since ever since I moved out of my mom's house. But after a year of living on my own, I was finally, no way, it was almost two years at that point. Anyway, like after one to two years from living on my own, I was finally feeling stable enough in my life where I could take care of a pet. And basically, perfect timing. My friend, like childhood friend, whose family owns a barn and stuff, like they have a farm, they had found three abandoned kittens uh, from their barn. So she like just posted a picture of the kittens to me going like, oh my god, look what we found. Aren't they, aren't they so cute? And I just, I felt like it was the perfect timing. So I asked her if the kittens already had a home and if they didn't, I could get one. So Ash wasn't from a like center or anything, but I do still like think that he's a rescue cat in a sense since the kittens would have probably been put down if they didn't find homes which by the way all three kittens did find a home so no worries about that but yeah uh i think in september august september of 2020 i drove over to the city where i grew up in we went to my friend's mom's place or like her parents place and we were the kittens were super shy they weren't really used to humans so they weren't like like they had been just living in the barn like their parents hadn't really tried to get them used to humans or anything so we went over there we were trying to make one of the kittens or like at least one of the kittens show up by offering food and only one of those uh, one of the kittens did and the one kitten who did show up we snatched him threw him into a cat carrier and that's Ash. <laughs> he was the bravest of the bunch or maybe the hungriest and yeah then I brought him home and got a whole bag of plums as well because they had like a plum tree and basically I got my kitten for free and even got plums as like a bonus little oh that's Ash like as a bonus uh thing okay the butter is melted next thing that i need to do i think we can move back to the pot position before let me just yeet ash away so that i don't hurt him accidentally add the chocolate and stir until the chocolate is melted so let's do that and yeah i think that is ash lore like when he came to me he was so shy like literally the most scared little baby I've ever seen. If I even, like, when Ash first came to me, if I even looked towards him, he would switch from one hiding spot to another. But slowly got used to each other. And now, as you guys probably know, he is the cuddliest little baby ever. Like, literally attached to me 24-7. So yeah, that is Ashlore. Um, if you guys want to know more about him, feel free to ask. And I would love to tell you guys, I love talking about my cat. Like, I would literally do a whole video just about him if you guys want to. Another question regarding cats is, ever going to get another cat? And before, like, this month, I would have said, yes, I want to get another cat but I'm not sure when. Now I can say, yes, I'm going to get another cat. Uh, I am looking into it right now and I am probably going to adopt a second cat from a rescue center, but it is a slow process. I haven't like uh, gotten in touch with any centers or anything yet, but right now it's like actually a plan that I have, like right now, I'm actually planning on looking into it. I'm planning on like getting a cat sooner rather than later. So yeah, that's really, really exciting. Okay, now this says 
that it needs to cool down for a little bit which i don't know what little bit means uh so let's just i don't know answer a few questions one question <laughs> while we let this cool off and then we need to add in an egg some sugar and some salt and he also says that i would need one of those like like machines to mix all of that together but i don't own that so we're just gonna go by hand next question is what book uh, what books or a book are you reading right now <laughs> once again before like this month i would have basically said nothing i'm being very bad about reading recently but i'm finally starting to get over my reading slump that has been going on since like february but now i'm finally starting to get over it and i am currently reading actually just one book right now but currently uh, i hate my bags bags are the worst thing when it's summer <laughs> can Faye concentrate on a question no the book that i'm reading right now is tj clune's under a whispering door and i'm like a little bit over halfway through it and i'm liking it but not as much as tj clune's another book that i read which was the cerulean sea something like that like it's cold enough that i can touch the pot no i don't think it's hot okay moving on i feel like one thing you will like you can expect to see is my kitchen getting messier and messier as the video goes on <laughs> i hit my elbow anyway as i mix in the egg the sugar and the salt let's go to another question which is or like two of the next questions are about games so the first question is what's my favorite game and i feel like it's so hard to pick just one if i had to do like top three i think and these aren't in like no specific order i think my top three of games would be sims 4 obviously stardew valley and i guess genshin like i don't really play genshin anymore but it does still have like a very special place in my heart you know like i do still absolutely adore the game and the like memories and excitement that it gave me i just like don't feel like playing it anymore but our games uh, are your favorite games supposed to be like timeless i don't know the only two games that i can literally see myself playing time and time again are sims 4 and stardew valley so maybe those two are my favorite games who knows and also another game related question is what is your favorite comfy game right now like obviously sims 4 stardew valley always <laughs> always gonna be my favorite com comfy games overall i'm just like a comfy gamer honestly i'm a comfy girly so apart from those two another two that i've been really into recently is mail time which i've been playing a lot on my stream as well it's so adorable it's a little indie game where you play as a mail carrier delivering mail to forest animals the art style is adorable and the dialogue is hilarious and then i also really really like our life beginnings and always it is a visual novel where you play through the main character's whole life well, like not whole life but like basically from a child as until you're an adult and since it's a visual novel it's a romance visual novel you can romance your childhood best friend if you want to but there is also a route where you can just stay as friends and it's so wholesome like i feel like visual novels are so often like really dramatic or really spicy or maybe i just haven't found the right visual novels but our life is just so wholesome and cute and like it's it's perfect for a romantic like myself but if you guys have any recommendations for like cute and wholesome visual novels 
Like, there can be spice, but, like, I'm not really into the characters where, like, their whole personality is, oh, let's fuck, you know? Like, I, I want something cute, I want something wholesome. <laughs> so if you guys have any recommendations, let me know. Mix all of the rest of the dry ingredients by themselves, and then into this. Okay. This kitchen is not bay friendly literally. I'm so short. So as we mix all of this together, let's move on to the next category, which is streaming related questions. And I am really excited for these because... Hmm. Mess incoming, I feel like. But yeah, as you guys probably know, I'm a streamer. Or if you don't, uh, please go follow my Twitch. But yeah, I'm a streamer. I feel like a lot of my community is on Twitch. So, the first streaming question is, why did you start streaming and what made you keep streaming? I started streaming inspired by other... Oh my god. <laughs> I did not notice, but there's literally... Okay, I, I just made a mess. Slider streaming, definitely inspired by other people. I almost started using Twitch basically like a few months before I started streaming myself. I immediately found a lot of streamers who I really liked and who I nowadays am really proud to call my friends as well. Like, hey Rayon and Two Lilips. Their streams were just always such a good time. I loved hanging out there. And that definitely inspired me to like start thinking about streaming. When my best friend Kujika started streaming herself, I feel like that was the last thing that kind of pushed me to start and try. And I actually remember tweeting at some point that, okay, if I don't... Yeah, because it was like around the time where we're, when I was getting results back about whether or not I got into uni and I remember at some point tweeting like okay if I don't get into uni I'm just gonna spend a heck ton of money and like get a bunch of streaming equipment and start streaming and I did get into uni but I decided to spend the money anyway it's not heck of a lot heck though I literally started with just a webcam but I decided to spend that money and start streaming and it was definitely awkward at first it was a lot of learning and being embarrassing nowadays when i look back to my old vods or like old clips i cringe a little bit about how bad the camera quality is or how bad the sound quality is because i used my headset mic for like months but i think what kept me streaming was just the fact that like I loved talking to people. I loved getting to know people. Just like finding new people with a similar interest because like I do have friends who are gamers but definitely not that much or like if they are gamers I didn't really share like similar games with them. Like a lot of my friends like Genshin but a lot of them I'm not like that close close with. I feel like what kept me streaming was just like the connections I made and the people I met, which sounds such a cliche, but like, it's true. And I also like, I always liked creating content. Like it sounds so dumb, but like, I've always dreamed about doing content creation. And I like YouTube, but I definitely find editing hard. So, the fact that streaming was kind of like the best parts of creating YouTube videos without the bad parts, aka editing, was also very charming for me. And then, kind of a question I already answered to is, what's your favorite thing about streaming? And I think, yeah, like, such a cliche answer, but like, it's true. I love the people I met. Like, the people who I meet in my streams, who come into my streams and are so sweet to me, that is my favorite part. But also like the friends that are like the genuine friends that I've made 
through streaming. Like, there are people who I wouldn't have met if I didn't start using a silly website called Twitch. And now they are like some of my best friends and I'm planning to fly over to the United States to meet them. And like, I don't know, it's just so crazy to me. I feel like I've never made such strong and genuine connections on the internet that I have on Twitch. This is the second, the last question is what's your favorite memory about streaming? Any of the subathons or like both of the subathons that I've done are definitely some of my favorite memories because those were just like so special. Me streaming for 12 hours and people staying there for the whole of that time is just so wild to me because like why the fuck do you, are you interested in what I do for 12 months? No, not 12 months, 12 hours. Also, not necessarily streaming, but like streaming related is TwitchCon. When I flew to TwitchCon Amsterdam by myself and met the people I mentioned earlier. I met Hey Rayon and Two Lilips uh, in TwitchCon Amsterdam last year. That is definitely memorable for me. And then just like some random things. Like for example, there are some, just some comments that people have said to me, like good comments that have literally been stuck in my head ever since they were said. Like I remember one of my viewers said that like, I love how in a few years I can look back to your streams and tell people, hey, that person raised me. That's such a wild thing to think about. That like, people feel like my streams and my content have had enough impact on them that they would feel like something like that is true and like something like that is, like, it's just wild to me that I, like, I'm that memorable in someone else's life. Like, you guys are so memorable in mine, but it's just like, it's honoring and wild to think about the fact that y'all think, think the same about me. So any comments like that, any sweet comments that y'all give to me, I honestly feel like are very, very memorable and like one of my favorite memories. So the last question is, would you like to be full-time streamer or do you want to work with something else? And like the genuine actual answer is that yes, I would love to be a full-time streamer. I actually like, I feel like it is one of my biggest dreams right now. Creating content and streaming is just the only thing right now that I see myself being interested in. If you guys don't know, I study library science in university and like, when I've talked about this with friends, I've always said that like, I wouldn't hate working in a library. Like there is a reason why I applied to this major. So I wouldn't hate it, but I don't know if I would be genuinely happy working as a librarian for the rest of my years. Content creation is just the only thing that I'm actually really, really passionate about. I am trying to work hard towards being able to make this my full-time job. I know that it's a long time coming, but luckily I have like five years until I graduate. <laughs> okay, next thing we're gonna do is pour all of the batter into the pan. Ooh, it's thick. <gasps> That is so satisfying. Oh my God. Okay, next thing, next thing, next thing is that this is gonna go into the oven, I think for 20 to 25 uh, minutes. So let me pop it in there. And then I will probably add a little clip of us cutting into it when I'm at my friend's place and 20 to 25 minutes. Voi olla, että näitä ei ihan hirveän muuta kakkuiselta tunnu, mutta se näyttää sillä tavalla.
Niin on, kun mä sille, että se oli mun uunis 20 minuuttia, ja sitten se oli silloin vielä ihan liian löysä. Sitten mä laitoin kaksi, niin kuin viideksi minuutiksi lisää, ja sitten se olikin yhtäkkiä tällä. Joo, siis se on, kun sen pitää ottaa, tai mä tiedän muuta kakuista, mutta niin kuin, varsinkin kun mä tein sen niitä semmosia, siis saa savuikeksejä, niin nehän pitää ottaa aina liian raakana. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. Thank you so much for uh, tuning into today's video. I know that it has been a long time coming. But I'm proud of myself for finally doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little Q&A video. This is the first Q&A I've ever done in my five years of YouTube because I was just so scared that no one would ask any questions. <laughs> so thank you so much for all of the questions that you guys saw sent. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you follow my Twitch, like I said already, and all my other socials will be linked down as well. I love and appreciate every single one of you so 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 much and I will see you guys see you guys in the next video. So